This landscape would look so much better if we could add a person for scale and a sense of awe, but it can be a tricky blend. In this video, we'll look at how Photoshop's new Harmonize feature makes it super easy to do. To get started, I would ideally have a real photograph, a second layer of myself or a person looking off the distance to blend in here, but I don't have a photograph looking away from the camera handy. So let's just generate one with AI because we're gonna create this for social media and the AI will do just fine, even though I've got a full resolution file here. So go up to edit, generate image, and take advantage of the AI built into Photoshop. Click on photo for the best quality results. And then I'm gonna paste in a prompt I already wrote, which says photo of a man standing and staring off in the distance facing back and to the left. I'm picturing someone right here looking towards the sun. His entire body is in the image, not cropped. He is wearing hiking pants, hiking boots, and a t-shirt. So let's click generate and give Photoshop a chance to come up with a few variations we can play with. So this first one, he's not looking left. We could flip the image and the boot is cropped off, though I'm not sure that's a problem. Keep in mind, this can be for social media and the boot's gonna be in deep shadow. So you're probably not gonna see that defect for my use, but let's see if we can do better. In the second one, uh, the feet are a little bit more clean. Again, looking in the wrong direction. And the lighting is off. Notice the lighting is on the back side of the person, not towards where he'll be looking because we're well, gonna have him looking towards the sun. So we're gonna have to flip that lighting. And why don't we just use this? Cause this is an interesting challenge. This shows just how good this harmonized tool is. We'll work with this one, even though it has the wrong lighting. Now what we need to do is cut them out, remove this original background. When you use the generative AI, in the variations, you can click and choose remove background to clean it up. I should also note, you've got this option to report bad results. So if we go look, let's maybe look at a third one, like the head's cut off. I don't like that. Let's go click and you can say poor and you can tell Adobe what you didn't like. It didn't match my original text prompt. You could add some notes and submit it. Let Adobe know how to make the AI better. So let's come back to the version we do want here. This is gonna work just fine. So we can cut this person out. If you're not working with AI, let's take a look at how that would work. So let's just go look at a regular layer. You don't have those AI versions in the properties panel in Photoshop, but what you do have is remove background. So if you're working with a real photograph, this is how you can clean it up very easily. But we've got an AI and with the AI selected, the option is just simply hidden here with the background. So a little bit different depending on whether you use AI or not. So just click that, give Photoshop a second to clean it up. And it's done a nice job of cutting out our subject. So all we need to do now is just put them in position. I'm going to zoom back so we can see these little grab handles. And if you don't see these, hit Command or Control T and then just drag the corner in to make them nice and small. It's going to have to be really small because this is a pretty far away ledge over here. I mean, he's not going to be that tall even. Let's zoom in a little bit, we can see better. It needs to be probably even smaller yet. And gonna have him kind of like right around here, but I want him facing towards the sun. He's gotta flip the other direction. Whenever you have these grab handles active with Command or Control T, you can just right click for more options. And down at the bottom is this flip horizontal. This is something you use quite a bit if you're compositing people into an image. So just flip them. Now he's looking in the correct direction. We can kind of move into position like so. And I think that is good. So obviously it's not matching the overall color and tonality of this image because it came from a totally different image. And you might have one that is even you know, less good in matching, but we need to clean this up. And this would be a tremendous amount of work to do in Photoshop, aside from the fact that the shadows are too bright, it should be a little bit warmer, and the light's on the wrong side of the person. So that's a huge issue and not something you would easily be able to fix. But now we can go up to layer, harmonize, and let the AI in Photoshop create a new version of our layer to clean this person up. And I think it does just a fantastic job. And you can see in this first result, it's overall pretty close, but a little bit kind of red. Let's try the next variation. So in the properties panel, just like when we generated the original layer, when we harmonize, we have options and properties. That looks a little more neutral and correct. And so I think this middle one is correct. Now you're probably thinking, well, these edges look funny and they do. It's not properly cut out. 
what's going on here is that we've got kind of different results from the original to this harmonized version. Let's just take a look at what the harmonized layer does. Notice that the original had a bunch of transparency and the harmonized layer actually grabbed the background and matted it in here. So this is like a flat copy of the image, but it's even more subtle than that. If I shift click on this mask, we can see the full layer. Let's just zoom in here. Notice that the harmonized layer is you know, almost as detailed as the original here. But outside of the cutout, look at the foreground here. It's much lower quality. So what's happening is you've got a pretty high resolution version inside your original cutout, but then it creates kind of a fake background for the purpose of blending in outside of your cutout. So it's kind of extending beyond the original and these pixels can affect the image. So let's go make this active again and take a look at what's happening. I'll zoom back just a little bit. If I look at my original cutout, it's a very clean, high quality mask. But if I option click to see the other one here, the harmonize has a much lower quality mask. The edges are imperfect. There's a lot of weird blending into the background. And so this is effectively a bad mask. So I have a couple of options. I could just bring over this mask by clicking and dragging it, or an even simpler option here, if we go back to the image, if I hold on the option or alt key, when I hover between the layers, see that you get the little clipping group. I can just click there to clip. And now these pixels are limited by these pixels, which are masked. And you can see now we have a clean result. If I go from before, where we've got the original harmonized to after, how nicely that's cleaned up the image and it composites very, very nicely there. And let's just take a look at this. You know, if we go back to this version here, we were lit from the right and now we're blended into the image in a very appropriate way. And we could add, you know, some dodging in the highlight edge if we wanted to. I don't think it's necessary, but it's really transformed this result. And keep in mind, this is an 8,000 pixel wide printable image. And what we've done here is created an AI person, resize them, and use a second AI to harmonize them. So it's a lot of AI. And you know, does it match the pixels here? No, it is not at the level that I would be able to print this large on a wall. But is this gonna work for social media? Absolutely. And if I even zoom out just to like 100%, that's pretty hard to see. And by the time I look at the whole image for social media, you would never know the difference there. So I think it's an incredible result for an early stage beta that is just only going to get better with time. But if you had to clean this up, you know, certainly working from a real original photograph, and then you could do whatever additional work you want to do on this harmonized layer. But you can see how very, very easily we're able to blend this person in with that single command. And I think it looks fantastic. So at this point, I think we're ready to go. What I want to do now is export it for Instagram and make the sun really pop using high dynamic range display. So for that, we use WebSharp Pro because the high dynamic range on Instagram is available to like 90% of your audience because they're looking on smartphones that support this and it looks great. So with WebSharp Pro, choose Instagram post and in settings, we wanna choose JPEG with a gain map, P3 works great. And the key one here is enhance SDR to HDR. This is a standard dynamic range, 16 bit image, not a 32 bit HDR. We're gonna create it automatically with WebSharp Pro with this option. And then lastly, I'm gonna use the leave image open. So rather than just exporting directly to disk, I'm gonna be able to review it and control where that HDR effect is applied. So it goes more into the sun than in the shadows. So go ahead and use these settings. Go click on export. WebShop Pro is gonna generate our dummy image with a preview of the results. And I am working on a standard dynamic range display. I do not have HDR in this video. So this would normally blow out. Normally you'd have kind of like this blown out result if you don't have an HDR display because HDR is a special screen technology. So in WebSharp Pro, we can dim our preview and get a simulation of the HDR even though we don't have HDR support right now. So this is just darkening the overall results so we can see the relative HDR versus, this is the HDR layer that shows this, versus underneath is the SDR. So this is kind of the overall effect we'd be adding for social media to simulate it to look better on a real HDR display 
but we can see it here. And more importantly, I can go modify my mask to apply the HDR where I want it on the sun. So I'm gonna click and make it active. Hit G for my gradient. I've got a white to black gradient going radially. I just click and drag to create that sun effect like so. And now what we'd have is someone without an HDR display would normally have a view more like this. And with HDR on the phone, it's gonna pop and look like this. So I'm happy with this result. And I just click save to finish exporting the image. And you can see it's created two versions of the image because in WebSharp Pro, I was using an option to create both an SDR reference and my HDR gain map because I like to show this for teaching purposes on Instagram. So I've got both of these. I'm gonna select both. I'm gonna go to my browser and in Instagram, I'll just go click on create, post. Let's go back to the finder, drag both images over. And then you always need to go and choose original ratio. If you crop the image, you'll lose HDR. And then I wanna sort these so that the HDR comes first. So when people view this, they'd have an HDR, which you can't see right now in this video, followed by an SDR for reference in the same post. Totally optional, but it's just the way I like to show these images. Just go click on next, next and share. And we've just uploaded an HDR to Instagram. And if you go to instagram.com slash Craig Benz Photography or on your phone, you'll be able to see the final result with the full benefit of HDR. Now click on these videos for more Photoshop tutorials.